Hi, welcome to Timber and Chain. I'm Elisa Hopper, and today I want to make jewelry stands out of polymer clay. I want to display some earrings, and I want to be able to make them myself and not pay a fortune. I've made a few prototypes, so come with me as we make them. Display pieces or jewelry holders can be expensive, and sometimes we just want something we have in our minds, like a specific color or style, so I decided to make my own from polymer clay. I have a lot of clay lying around, so I'm going to show you what you can do with some easily accessible materials. My goal in these videos is to show you that you don't have to have a professional studio set up and a bunch of expensive tools to make your own pieces and be creative. I have a detailed list of all materials and tools with their links for purchase on my blog so you can easily find them online. You can find that list at timberandchain.com slash blog, which is also listed below in the description. So here we go. I'm using a mixture of different polymer clays, including Sculpey 3, Sculpey Primo, and this new brand, Cato Polyclay, which I'll briefly review in a minute. I use a mixture because Sculpey 3 is very pliable and easy to work with for everything but jewelry, though it does have its downfalls as well. Again, the colors are listed on my blog, but quickly they are white, black, pearl, buried treasure, yellow gold glitter, gold, white gold glitter, beige, and ballet slipper pink. Also keep in mind these colors are different with the different colors of clay. So beige in Sculpey 3 is very different than that same color name in Sculpey Primo. Snag that list off my blog if you want it. I'm starting with a T-stand style display and I'm going to reinforce it with 20 gauge wire. This is not totally necessary, but I have the wire and I didn't want to bake twice. I have been a jeweler and jewelry designer for about 12 years and I have the tools, so why not use them? Details for the T-stand with no wire are in my blog, but basically you can make each piece separately, bake them for 20 minutes, then use liquid clay or bacon bond to hold them together and bake again for 30 minutes. Okay, I roll out the clay in my desired color for the top and I am going to make a rectangle here. This should be about four to five millimeters thick, but remember your earring posts have to go through and have enough room for a back to attach to it behind the piece. I cut it to size and lay my wire inside, careful to keep it toward the top or bottom so I can drill holes in the center later and not hit the wire. Anytime I'm designing something from scratch and making a pattern for it, I like to start with the finished product at the end and work backward. This helps me not to miss any necessary steps. So I fold over the clay and trim it up with my blade so it's a clean rectangle shape. Next, I make the connector bar that holds the top of the base. I roll out the clay and lay the wire in there and then I roll it up. Here's where Sculpey 3 works for me. I can just kind of smear the seam into itself so it disappears and then roll it to clean it up. Cut off the ends while rolling so a bit of the wire is showing. I roll so I don't deform the clay. Slip the wire on one end into the top to form a T. Now make the base. This is a total experiment here, but I end up liking the result. It would be super easy just to use a block of clay or a half a block so feel free to do that for your style, but I wanted something a little more artsy and I didn't want to use that much clay. I'm rolling out the glitter gold with my clay conditioning machine, which is really just a cheaper pasta roller. And since this accent clay is a bit more brittle, it looks sort of torn on the edges, which I like. So I'm going to stack slices of it and press them together to form an easy base. If you don't wanna press because you don't want fingerprints or to deform the clay at all, you can just use bacon bond or liquid clay between the layers and it will bake together. Now take the pull part of the T and set the wire on the loose end into the base. That works. I don't like how simple this looks, so I wanna dress it up a little and I add some gold leaf flex. This was a bad idea and it gets worse, so I'll skip ahead to after I tear it apart, run it through the machine, and start over from scratch. Much better. Before baking, I need to hold the pieces together because they need to meld while baking. Again, you can use liquid clay or bacon bond here. 
I choose Bacon Bond, and if I had to do it over, I would use liquid clay because I think it holds better. Now for the small stud earring holder. I couldn't find Sculpey Pearl because the stores and online stores are all sold out, thanks COVID. So I'm using this Kato Poly Clay Pearl. This is the first time I'm using it. I open the package and it smells pretty bad. Like bad toxic chemicals bad. Ew. It's also really difficult to condition and feels more like cheap plastic than clay. To make it easier, I slice it into small pieces and run it through the machine. To make the holder, I'm going to stack a few slices together and I want to gold leaf just one rough edge, so I slice the other one. Of course, this is up to your style preference and I'm just experimenting here, so live your life freely. Now I make the base. I'm going to do a similar stack with torn edges so I can gold leaf them, but I sort of wish I'd just made a block. Well, life goes on. Now I need to cut a slot out of the center for the holder portion. The long blade works great for this. Then I use my pointy tool to hollow it out and smooth the edges. If you don't have these tools, which are fairly inexpensive, you can really use anything. A sharp knife would work for the cutting and the back of a butter knife for the smoothing would work great. Make sure it fits. And then it's ready for baking. For the last style, I'm going to make a longer board to hold more jewelry. Here I combine two colors by overlapping the middle and rolling it out. Then I'm going to add synthetic gold leaf sheets by tearing little pieces and laying them where I want on the board. An easier way to do this is to buy the flex already torn and just lightly sprinkle them over the top. Those are on Amazon and I will link them in my blog too. Once I have my desired shape, I make the base. Here I'm making peg type legs just to show some different designs. I made this as difficult as possible and should have just rolled it out into a rectangle, but that's not real life for a designer, is it? Here's the thing, I'm trying to use up the extra clay so I don't have any waste. I really don't like to waste clay because it's plastic. It doesn't look like there's enough to do that. So I'm rigging it here to use up the rest. In a similar fashion to the last base, I cut a notch for the top, but this time I want to slant it upwards just a bit to make it easier to see from a dresser or counter. It ends up working and no clay is wasted, so I call that a win. Everything is ready for baking. I bake on parchment paper for 15 minutes per quarter inch usually, but for these I bake about 45 minutes to really cure the clay, harden the bacon bond or liquid clay, and make them as sturdy as possible. This is an important step. If you don't cure or bake for long enough, the pieces are bendy and will break. Let the pieces cool completely. Okay, here's my final review of the Kato Poly Clay. I have so many jokes here, but I will save them for a less professional setting. <laughs> this clay was a disaster from start to finish. The smell while baking made me want to set the house on fire and start over with life. It was winter, but I opened the windows to avoid breathing whatever that was. When I removed everything from the oven, every piece of the Kato was covered in bubbles that weren't there while it was raw. In fact, there were even a few new bubbles in the Sculpey 3 next to it as well, but not nearly like the Kato clay. I will not be using that mess again. Back to the displays. You don't have to glaze these if you'd like a raw look, but I want a nice satin finish so I use Sculpey Satin Glaze. Sculpey Gloss Glaze also works, but it's a little shinier. Brush it on evenly and let it dry. It dried in just a few minutes, so in the meantime, I prep my gold leaf in liquid form by shaking it a lot. I use a smaller detail paintbrush from Blick Art Supply Online, which I also link in the blog, and carefully go around the edges. This takes much longer to dry, so I let it sit. Now, I'm always eager to glaze and gold leaf, but you should drill the holes before this so you can sand the edges if needed, then glaze. Because this was a prototype, I wasn't too concerned about this. For the holes, I use a power drill, although most clay jewelry artists use a little Dremel tool. Measure where you want them and think of your own jewelry. If you have a lot of stud earrings, you can obviously measure for more earrings. I'm making room for three pairs in this small one, nine pairs in the larger one, and just one pair on the tea stand for display. You don't have to use all the holes and I will probably end up just hanging some hook ear wires over the top as well. Once the holes are drilled, you are finished.
There are several more details I include in the blog, so be sure to head over to timberandchain.com slash blog. While you're there, sign up for my monthly newsletter where you'll find more details, giveaways, special discounts, and more. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, hit the subscribe button. And as always, like, share, and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Now go make something amazing.